Hey guys, Dark with Cyclone FPV. I'm actually uh, just got off of a clean shave and starting all over again with the beard, so I look a little different, I get it. Uh, in either case, um, I'm working on a pain in the butt quad today, and this is for a customer of mine uh, named Liam. Liam, a poor guy, got uh, he got this quad, um, and I don't know where he got it from or what have you, but here's a picture of it right here. Uh, Fl Fly Sky, is, uh, he sent with it as well. Wanted us to configure the whole thing, and I actually started this video out earlier today but um, when I came back, I realized I shaved and it was gonna look kind of weird. All of a sudden I went from beard to no beard and there was no transition to the video. So I was like, you know what, screw it. We're gonna start all, all I've done is taken the cover off basically and uh, gone through a couple updates, but I'm gonna show you what we did. So anyways, this board is a Spectrum board. It's the F400 um, flight controller and it comes with race, uh, race flight, right? It's supposed to be using race flight uh, configurator, but here's the weird part, right? So <clears throat> let me show you this screen real quick. And so here's what it says. It says Go to, why isn't this working? Hold on a second, hold on. Let me uh, let me cancel that and then add the computer back. It's a frozen screen there. All right, so let's do this. So here's the web now, right? So it says go to raceflight.net. So check this out, raceflight.net. And you get this um, page. And this, apparently somebody has purchased a domain and so this sucks, right? But if you try to take this board and you try to connect it um, into anything else like uh, beta flight or what have you it's not going to work it doesn't even come up with a com port you have to um you have to kind of put it in dfu mode what i ended up doing was i loaded um i loaded uh, let me see which one was it oh my gosh i gotta i gotta find this in my thing so i loaded flight one okay i loaded flight one and got it to put it into dfu mode without using the boot pins and then from there i went to clean flight and flashed it with the blah blah blah, blah. long story short so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do it for you guys this way and here's what we're going to do so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the boot pins and I have now lost them again. So hold on one second. Uh, I gotta find out where I put those. Uh, boot pins are near the, here. So right here, these two little circles right here um, are the boot pins, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is just what I did before basically, and I'll let you, I'll have you watch the screen here. So let's do this, hold on, there we go. Let's do that. And this is stupid, I don't need this. But what I will do is I'll open beta flight, okay? All right. So. I'm going to, if you have a board like this, which sucks, I would tell you probably just get another one. But if you, if you can't, which board doesn't really suck, it's just, it's just the way they've done it is a real big pain in the ass, okay? It comes, it comes ready to run uh, Spectrum receivers. Trying to do anything else is, is, is a real big pain, and I'm learning this as I go. So um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna take some tweezers here, put them in these pins, and we're gonna basically load this into DFU mode. Now, from there, you can see now, okay? Because this is what you wanna do. You wanna get out of the race flight set up all together, right? So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna hold these pins here. We're gonna go to firmware flasher and we're gonna locate the Spectrum board. And there it is, the Spectrum 400. So we're gonna click load firmware, load online, and then we're gonna flash it. Okay, so let's do that. I'm really kind of pissed off at this board because it's a real big pain in the butt the way they've done it. But but either case, we're gonna fix it and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So we're using, uh, what is that? The Oh my gosh, what is that controller? Hold on, I gotta go and check again on my website because I can't remember the name of this flight. I know it's a fly sky, but I can't, it's an eight, something with an eight. Just can't remember all these things. So hold on a second, let me go to receivers, uh, receivers, and then fly sky, turning fly sky, and it is this one right here. It's gonna be right about here when it loads. There it is. So we're using the X6B and we're using iBus on that, okay? So um, let's go back to beta flight, make sure that our stuff is uploading properly. Hopefully I didn't screw this up. Okay, it says it's good. It's out of DFU mode. Let's go ahead and unplug the USB, plug it back in. Beautiful. So watch what's gonna happen. So now we're gonna connect and we're gonna look at everything that we've got. All right, so the good news is we can't get out of race flight on this thing. Ports, um, I'm gonna tell you right now that I've been looking at these ports and this whole thing is so whoppy job, doesn't make sense. But what I am gonna do is I flipped it over and I found, I tried RX4 and all it kept doing was shutting the board down. Every time I would connect the um, iBus cable to here, all the lights would go off. So I'm not sure what's wrong with this, but on receiver two, RX2, UART2, sorry. We're gonna go to UART2. They initially have it here for UART5. It has failed every time. So I'm gonna get off of that. We're just gonna jump over to UART2 and we're gonna see if it works this way, okay? So this is a lot more work than would be expected. And I'm gonna tell anybody who does this, two things that I don't like about this setup. One, you don't need a receiver this big. I would definitely go with something smaller because you really cramped this by combining it into the VTX. Two, get a different board. Uh, in the future, in the future. And I'm not talking shit about this board necessarily. I'm just saying, if you wanna do this on your own, I mean, it's a lot of work for me to do and I've been doing this a long time and I'm still stuck with some of the stuff that this board is causing. So I would just tell you for your own sanity, um, uh, go a different route. Now, uh, to save space, because one of the things about this board 
one of the things about this entire build is that there's not enough space. And so they're using all these pins. And I don't really like this method either. Uh, not at this point because of the amount of room that we, the little amount of room that we have. So now that we're in beta flight, um, I'm actually going to shift over now. And we're going to work on the board a little bit. Okay. So here goes. First thing we want to do is I'm going to turn on the soldering machine, get the glue gun ready. And here we go. I want to get rid of these pins here. Now, I mean, this is a lot of work for the ESCs also. All right. But, but the work has been done clean. I don't know who did the work, but it was, it was well done here. And I do like this plexiglass uh, separation here. Um, there are a couple issues you're going to find in just a second that we're going to have with this. Uh, and I'll show you and I'll show you how to work around them. One of them is going to be the voltage reading. Um, but anyways, here goes. All right. So let me just kind of situate this crap so that we've got room. All right. Our solder gun is heating up. And in the meantime, um, this is got to go. All right. So I'm going to de I'm debating here whether I can get this heated up enough. But most likely what I'm going to do is separate these and I'm going to try it one time. And if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to cut them. Right now I'm going to separate them because what I want to do is I want to heat them up and pull them. And I want to do it one at a time. All right. So let me see if I can. Uh, solder gun's hot. I'm not sure what is happening to it, but let me see. Hold on. I think my uh, element here is uh, coming to an end. Let me see. There we go. All right. So that should be good. Let me clean this tip off here. There we go. All right. All right, it's heating up there. It's getting up there. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to try, and I mean, this is instant heat, so it's going to, the minute, all right, thank you. The minute I touch this, I've got to be careful because you can't pull it with your hand, all right? And I'm hoping that I can get this hot enough, but if not, like I said, I'll just cut it and solder it. So what I want to do, <laughs> this is going to be tricky, but I would like to pull it through if it will let me. And it doesn't look like it's going to let me, so fine. Let's not waste any time. I said I would try it. If it didn't work, we cut it, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to cut these. One, here, two, here, and three, here. Don't need them. Got them. And then I'm just going to trim these off. One, they're firing all over the place in the shop. Three, you can hear them hitting the ceiling. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, get our flux pen. And this is one messy and crowded table right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and reflux this board. And I know I'm coming over here to UR2. All right. So let me go ahead and get that ready. All right. Turn off already then. Okay. So here's the ground. We're going to go ahead and hit that with some solder. Here's our 5 volt. We're going to hit that with some solder. And then here is our UR2. And we're going to hit that with some solder. Okay. Now let's take our cables. And let's stop wasting all this room, okay? What we wanna do is we're just gonna lay out our five volt here. Get rid of all the plastic and everything else. Five volt's gonna to go to the center. So let's cut five volt. Let's cut ground. There we go. Okay. Let me put my old man goggles on, which, I, there we go. All right, and we're going to strip these wires, tin them. This is, I'm telling you, a lot of work to do when any other board would have just been a, a simple plug and play for the most part. This one is very challenging in what you have to do, and I would advise against it, especially with raceflight.net the way it is. Now, you know, like I said, you can use flight one uh, to put this in DFU mode um, I don't know. It's just like I don't I don't like when you have to kind of rig it and especially when I'm doing it for customer here I don't want them to have to do that. So uh, we're just gonna find this easiest method here. Okay um, All right, so here we go. So let's go ahead and do this I'm gonna Turn this up. I cannot see this one. Oh, it's a very small wire. Okay let's See if I can salvage some of that All right I'm Not sure it's gonna be enough. Let me see There we go let me just put a little bit more on there. Okay. So first thing is we're going to do our... Let's get this off. We don't need the XT60 in either right now. Don't need this. All right. Here we go. So ground is going to go on first. There it is. 
Let's get our 5 volt on next. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to go over and do our IBUS. All right, so there it is. So let's just cut this here. Strip that. Junk out of my way. Turn it up. Okay, clean that tip off and then solder this down. All right, so what we've done now is we have now flashed the new firmware. We have now routed our receiver. So now what we're gonna do, and the cool thing about this one at least, one good benefit is that it does not require the uh, LiPo to get the, um, uh, so we should have light, which we do. We're gonna turn on a receiver, and we're gonna go to beta flight now, okay? And it does not require a LiPo to power that. So let's go ahead and do this. Get this goofy thing off my head for a minute. All right, let's connect. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse, guys? Come on. There we go. Connect. Okay, reset. Calibrate ports. Let's get port two for S for iBus. Save and reboot. Connect. Go to receiver. All right. Now, whoops, sorry. Go to configuration. My bad. Let's select one shot for now, and that way I'll do my uh, updates like that. That uh, eight and eight is not going to work. That's not going to hold right here, which we understand already. And let's go ahead and go to iBus here. And air mode, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Everything else we'll leave. Click save and reboot. Okay. Now, we're going to go to connect again. Go to receiver. And there we go. See that? We got everything dialed in perfectly. As a matter of fact, he sent me these pieces. Let me go ahead and screw these on real quick. All right. All right. So, we have iBus functioning on this Spectrum uh uh, 400, uh, the, uh, what is it called? The SPMFC, uh, <laughs> MFCF, whatever, 400, okay? And I was seeing people say that they had a hard time getting iBus to work, blah, 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 or SBus or anything for that matter. Now, SBus obviously is inverted, uh, but still, I, nonetheless, um, it is working now, and uh, we're good. I just gotta get this darn tape that he used off of here. It's all sticking to my hands. Here, there you go. So let's put these back on here now. Let's just try to make this thing look somewhat good. All right, so I'm very happy with this part. And what we're going to do now is we're going to calibrate the motors. But for those of you that didn't know how to do this part, and, you know, when you're having a race flight issue like that, this is easy. Just make sure to put your board in DFU mode. Find the uh, firmware in beta flight or clean flight. I actually use clean flight first. Uh, and uh, I find on some boards I do get a little bit, um, a little bit better result uh, from the beginning. Now let me see what switches we have. We have no switches. Oh, we do. Okay, so we'll make one of the arm switches over here, whatever they do. Okay, so let's go to modes here. We're going to make the arm switch. Uh, let's see, he's got... I would usually move them over. Let me see. I'm going to go into the radio here and make some adjustments. So here, you guys can watch this real quick. So let's hold okay. I think it's okay, yep. And then let's go to... Oh, I can't remember. Is it here? Auxiliary channels? Yeah. So channel 5 is SWD, which is over here, but we're going to change that. I want to go to over here. So we're going to make it SW, I believe that's C. SW, no, because SWC is over here. So what does that say? SW, I guess it'll be A. Okay. And then we're going to click OK. And then uh, we're going to make this one SWC. That's perfect. So I think if you hold cancel, that saves it. Let me see. SW is it? Yep. So now what we should see is if I go back to receiver now, right and I go to receiver there you go so now I've got this channel as my arming and I've got uh, oops, sorry this one as my mode selector perfect it's all we needed so we're gonna go to modes we're gonna select our arming range and we're gonna flip this so there it is that's gonna be armed and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our mode range so I'm gonna do uh, bottom will be horizon all right um, and let's see uh, what do we have here Okay, let me click save because I got to go back to the configuration real quick and see what they did on here. So uh, air mode would come off. 
save. Uh, anti-gravity, I guess you could keep that. Uh, so I'll leave that save. Okay. Now let's connect again. Go to modes. All right, so we're gonna do angle. And then what we will do is we will do, uh, we'll add this range here and we'll do air mode, which will be air mode with acro. And then we'll do, this is acro without air mode, this is air mode with acro, and this is horizon mode. And I think what I'll do is on a horizon, I'll also add angle just to start. So when this is all the way down, we're actually gonna have angle uh, and horizon, which I guess, yeah, that would be fine. And then, so here would be acro with air, and then this is acro, and then this is going to be the arming. Okay, so this is good. All right, so that being said, now we're done with that. We can click exit and cancel, get out of that, turn that off. We don't need the radio on. And now let's get back to our, uh, the rest of our setup here. All right, so we've got our receiver set. Um, we're going to have to calibrate that in a little bit. Let's go to our, uh, uh, let's disconnect actually. Let's open our uh, BL Heli. And start working on the oh you know what hold on a second before i even do any of that let me disconnect this real quick because i need to get this back on now so let me go ahead and find this little rubber piece here we can go ahead and fasten this once and for all back on i don't think i'll be taking it off again and so let me go ahead and do that let me finalize this part at least all right so i've got one i don't know where the rest of them are i gotta find them real quick but uh I do know that you're going to have an issue. If you're doing this, you're going to have an issue with the voltage, okay? So I'm going to have to go to power here in just a minute and show you guys what you do there. But uh, first thing is let's just get this board back on properly. Cannot get that on there right now, so let me go to a different one. There we go. Make sure all the wires are clear. Yep, they are. All right. That's one, two. All right, I need two more. I'll put one here. There we go. And I'm just going to try to make them all roughly the same. Uh, oh, that one's not. Okay. Should be okay, I guess. And then we'll do the last one here, which I'll find this little nylon fastener in just a second, I'm sure. They're always laying around somewhere. Uh, we get rid of this gorilla tape and all this other stuff. Okay, so uh, well, I'll just grab one. Hold on. There we go. This one here, and we will call it a day. Oh come on. I get this one to go on. Give it one more shot and then I'll just melt it. There, I think that might. I don't know if that's it or not. Still doesn't look like it wants to go on, but we've got a wire right here. So I'm a little curious as to how they added that with that wire right there. But for right now, just as long as I got it on there, I'll be fine. All right. So we've got to get the. Um, uh, we've got to get the lipo on here, so I'm going to go ahead and just plug this in. All right, and we're going to power this up. Okay. There we go. And what we're going to do first is we're going to read the setup here. Uh-oh. What channel? What? What? Oh, yeah. Whoops. My bad. My bad. My bad. Hold on. Oh, phone's ringing. One second. Oh, that's my wife. One second. Okay. So, got that call. Everything's good. All right. Now let's see, are we talking COM3? I think we are, yep. So now let's go ahead and read setup. Okay, and we need BL Heli 32, my bad. All right, so let me get out of this, cancel, close. And let's go to BL Heli 32, that's my fault right here. There we go, let's read the setup. All right, so that looks good, it needs an update, so let's go ahead and do an ESC flash. And we're gonna go ahead and flash the select ESCs. Now, you notice that I put this in one shot, 
125. That's what I do. That's an old school way of doing it. I prefer to do it that way. And the reason, uh, the reason that I do it that way here, let me explain to you. Um, so the reason I do it that way, right, is because um, this way, when I when I do a calibration, I can tell you, uh, you know, like if the ESCs are bad, if there's if there's when we do the calibration, if there's a huge difference between the max and mins on there, then we know there's a problem with the ESC, right? And we don't want to have that happen. So and once I do that and I test it, everything's fine. Then I can switch it to uh, D shot, right? But my thing is, I like to fly it in one shot. I like to configure it in one shot, and then we can switch from there. Um, that calibration tool is not in D shot, uh, and so it's just kind of the way I like to do them. It's my little safety to see, all right? So that's the whole purpose behind it. Now let's see where we're at. So here we go. Boom. We're still updating. I guess while that's doing that, I can start cleaning up a little bit. Never hurt to clean early. I don't think we're soldering anymore, so I can turn that off. Put this here, let's get rid of the trash. Actually, I'll need this, uh, I'll, I'm gonna need the voltage meter here multimeter because we are going to set the voltage up in beta flight so we're going to need that here and we're flashing ESC number four anyway so we're almost done we're getting ready to get back in here now and see how our motors run do our calibration so let's see how that works oh. okay so with this done what I want to do now I'm gonna click okay and then I'm gonna go back to ESC setup here make sure everything looks good leave everything like it is and then I'm going to click disconnect Okay, and then you got to remember that you need to power down everything at this point. So what we want to do is, as soon as we're done, let's go ahead and disconnect from the computer. Just turn off your LiPo, shut all the power down. Go ahead and plug the computer back in. Keep the LiPo off. Connect. Go to motors. Scroll all the way down. Turn this all the way up. Turn LiPo on. Turn all the way down. Excellent. Turn that off. Disconnect. Go back to BL Heli 32. Read the setup again. And now what you're going to have is you're going to see every motor's min and max, right? So check this out. So motor one, if you look up here, min is 1013, max is 1090 or 1999. Motor two, uh, 1016, that's 2005. 1015, 2001, and 1019, 2009. So. The maximum throttle can only be as fast as the slowest one, right? So in this case, 1999. So all of these are going to go to 1999. Now, the minimum throttle can only be as fast or can only be as slow as the fastest one. So we have 1013, 1016, 1019 is at the last. So they're all going to be 1019. So it's going to be 1019 and 1999. So what you're going to do is you're going to highlight all motors, left click, take this to 1019 and leave that at 1999. And now all four motors are going to get written to watch. Okay, so you're gonna have one, two, three, and four, boom, because every value changes. Gonna say, okay, now we're gonna stop calibrating. We're gonna start gonna do throttle calibration. We're gonna write that as well. Now, I do not know direction of the motors right now, so we may have to come back in here. But as it stands for right now, we can disconnect. Okay, give it a second. Excellent, now we're gonna connect to beta flight. We're gonna go to motors, and we're gonna make sure that motor one spins. So this quad is facing me. So motor one is gonna be over here in my top uh, top left. So let's go ahead and see if motor one spins. Motor one spins and it is spinning clockwise. Good, motor two is gonna be over here. Motor two spins clockwise, so we'll have to change the direction. Motor three, motor three spins clockwise, we'll change that one to motor four. Motor four spins clockwise, so those will stay the same. So we're gonna disconnect from here. We're gonna go back to BL Heli 32 and we're going to just reverse motors two and three, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go motor two, right click on it, click reversed, right setup. Okay, then right click on motor three, click reversed, right setup, and that's it. I'm gonna click okay, disconnect. 
And since we're not doing a firmware update, we're just doing this, you don't have to turn the power off and back on again, okay? So now we can go back, and we go back to motors now, and we can just turn them all on, and run them slowly, and make sure, clockwise, clockwise, counter, counter, perfect. Motors are set. So that's great. Now, what we want to do is let's look at our setup here. If we lift the front up, okay, yep, that's perfect. So our orientation is fine too. So we have our modes. So let's just test our modes. Let's turn on our radio. Okay. Now let's see what our receiver values are. Uh, okay, we need to adjust some of this. The calibration is not that great. So let's take this down. Uh, okay, so now I'm trying to remember. I think that it was... Oh my gosh, what was it? I have to remember, hold on. Was it these two? No, no, hold on. I gotta remember like what it was to get you into the secret mode. I can't, I can't remember here, hold on. Uh, no, that was. Actually, these are, This may be off only because the trims are off. Oh, that's perfect, actually. All right, so with these set, uh, everything else looks good. So let's go to motors and we're gonna test whether we can arm this. So as long as you arm this, there we go. Look at our motors. They're spinning now, they're armed. Perfect. We have good feedback, excellent. Now, look at something weird here, though. You see how that is? It's got zero voltage, right? So let's go to power and battery. And you're gonna see here where it says voltage meter, none. Let's go ahead and just do onboard. And we're gonna do onboard for both, okay? click save all right and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually power this off and we're gonna unplug all right now we're gonna plug back in power it up click connect and there's our voltage now but look how low it is okay so we know that the voltage coming into this is roughly about 11.5 let me show you so we're gonna do those we're gonna verify this right so we're gonna take our multimeter there you go. Now I'm just going to get to these two points here. Okay. Actually, I just need one of them. So let me get here. Okay, that's right. Yeah, right there. And I'll just go to my ground. Any ground really will be fine. Okay. No, that's not what. That's not what I wanted. There we go. Eleven point four eight is what we're pulling in. Okay. So this is way wrong, right? All right, so when we try to go change this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to power and battery. Turn the receiver off. Okay, so it will not do anything right now as it stands. And if you try to use calibration, it's going to say you have the battery is not plugged in or voltage and amperage meter sources are not set properly. Make sure that the voltage and or amperage reading uh, a value above, above zero, and it's not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crank this up. I think this will do it. Uh, let me see. Now let me turn this off. Turn it back on. I'm trying to remember where this was. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me see. I just want to get any kind of amperage reading at all. Uh, what did I do last time? Uh, I'm just going to play with the numbers. I mean, it really doesn't matter to me. I just want to play with the numbers here a little bit. So save. There we go. So you see how we have amperage readings right now? I mean, just throw the numbers anywhere. It doesn't really matter, right? What matters is that we want to be able to run calibration. All right. So the measured voltage right now, now I can tell you that the measure, here, I used one of these. So let's just go off of one of these real quick. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, let's see, I'll show you that. See if you can see that real quick. Okay, I know the glare is kind of off, so bear with me a second and I'll try my best to get this to where you can read it. So, okay, so this is a simple turning uh, It'll tell me where my, so you can see my voltage is 11.49, which is over here, right in the top right. And top left is my current amperage of 0.38. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and we're going to put that in there. So we're going to put 11.49. I think you can just do 11 point, well, I'll just do 11.49, okay? And we're going to go here, uh, what did I say, 0 0.38? 0 0.38, okay? 0 0.38, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Now watch, I'm going to click Calibrate, Apply Calibration, and it's going to go back and set everything for me, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off, I'm going to click Save, I'm going to turn off my power meter, turn off, unplug my flight controller, plug it back in, turn my power back on, and now let's connect, and all of a sudden, there we go, 11.5 volts, and we have, uh, I'm not really sure about the current draw, so we're going to have to probably deal with that one a little bit, 
um, because we do not have, I, if I put none here, I'm probably gonna be okay with that. We still have our voltage. The The onboard is, is so off on this that I'm not really sure how it's gonna take, um, but uh, I would say that right now it's probably not the best. <laughs> let me see where I'm at here. Yeah, it's not gonna help at all. So let me just see. I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm just gonna take the, the, I'm gonna do none here because there is not a current sensor on here. There is on the PDB, but I don't believe that was brought into the flight controller. Uh, let me check here. I think there's a way you can do it. Uh, yeah, you can, you could do a V, uh, let me see. Actually, maybe I can do this for them and help them out a little bit. Okay, so I have to, obviously I have to learn this board as well. So the idea here is that down here is the, up here is the current. Okay, so let me see how I would do that. Let me see if it's possible. Um, yeah, so the current is going to be over here. Oh, man, I got to get back down to here to see if I can even grab the current off of this thing. Uh, let me see. What is that? Is that a Maytag? No. I don't know where they have current on this. I'm going to give it a shot. So, I mean, I feel... I feel like the customer should, you know, be able to see that if you can. So we'll just see. If it becomes too much of a pain, I'm out. But let's just give it a shot, all right? So here we go. We're going to zoom out, and we will uh, work on this real quickly, see if we can find a solution to this. Just when I put the screwdrivers away, looks like we need to get back in here again. All right, so let me see what they got. here and see if there is a current output. I think there is actually. This crap, we're just going to get rid of all this mess, okay? God darn. And let's just get real. This is not necessary stuff. All right. Let's get to it. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so there's battery and ground. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find... Ooh. Battery that's 12 volt, that's going for the camera. Okay, we've got the ESCs, VTX. Uh, I don't know what's been going on here. I do not see where the current output would be on this. But, uh, oh here, wait. Okay, so they've cut the wire to that. Great. All right, so it was actually wire number three. So what they did is they took this output here. This is where you would get your current from and they've done Wonderful guys. Not a good idea, but they did it anyway. They cut the, um, they removed the wire. Okay. So it needed to be the third uh, wire. Yeah. So that doesn't help me at all. Okay. So let's see if I can find a wire to use to replace that or to do some magic. I have no idea. But we're going to give it a shot. Uh, how, many, how many is that? That is going to be a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's an eight pin. Now, those are fairly common, so let me just see if I've got one in the bag here. I try to save as many of these cables as I can. Uh, let's see. This might actually be lucky. So if the wires are pinned up like that, so and they are, so that'd be one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that, that might actually do it. Hold on. Let's see if we get lucky here. Holy moly, I think we got lucky. So let me pull that out. Hopefully this is gonna work. Now we don't need, this is a five volt. The fifth wire, the third, okay, one is, where's their cable? Well, one is ground. I'm not even gonna worry about the colors. One is ground, two is uh, VBAT, three is current, and four is five volt. I don't see a need for the five volt because they've already got everything running that way. So let me go ahead and take the fourth cable out. One, Three, four. Let's do that. Let's take this out. There we go. All right. And now we're back to three cables, and I believe that is going to solve our problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these. And Liam, please, when you look at this, do not go by wire color because obviously yellow does not signify ground and green does not signify um, VBAT. Okay? But just understand that sometimes 
we got to do what we got to do. And this is one of those times. So I'm going to remove your wires entirely. Let me go ahead. That'll actually clear up so that I can screw this uh, down anyway. So let me go ahead and do that. i got to wait for this to heat up. Though, so hold on. There we go. Get the tip of this soldering iron clean. And let's see if we can just heat this up. The solder that was used on here is like King Kong solder. It doesn't make any sense to me. It does not melt at a normal temperature, so we're just going to have to try to heat it up with our solder and pull this out. I hate when that happens. Okay, so we'll just do that, and then I'll clean this up in just a second. There we go. All right. So what I have to do now is I need to clean this up because... That wire is a cheap wire that is just stranding out and I don't want that in there. So I'm gonna to try to clean this as best as I can. Clean that ground all together. And it looks like it's coming out now. All right, so that being said, I wanna now lift this wire up a little bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the wire cutters in we're going to clip this little remainder here there we go let's lift that up just like that wire cutters clip that all together okay now I have a current here and then this is also a ground so I'm going to I'm actually going to probably leave that ground and use it um, so let me take this now Put it back the way it's supposed to be. And let's get these wires connected. We can get this junk out of here. Let's go this way. All right. And I'm not going to put that plexi back in because it really, all it did was hit the um, pins. So as much as I thought it was cool, it really has no place here at all. It's just for show. There's no protection coming from it being that we're already more than five millimeters spaced up. So I'd say we're pretty good as it stands. All right. So let's go ahead and fasten this back down now. All right, here we go. Let's put that first one. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so we're gonna do yellow is ground. That's what we agreed on. So let me go ahead and clean that up and get this ready to get the yellow. So let's burn off some of this, whatever is on here, this gunk. There we go. And we're gonna solder, but we're kind of out of, we don't have much room to pull this wire, so I'm just gonna place this piece of paper over here. And I'm going, to, I'm going to just tin it over the paper. I'll tin the green over the paper. And then I've got to get this one too. This is our current. And I need to tin that as well. There we go. And I'll tin that over the paper, I guess. Okay, so let's do that. There we go. All right, looks like we're ready to go. So remember guys, uh, yellow is gonna be ground. And again, this does not match any color scheme that you would normally do, but too bad. We are taking a eight pin that we found and that is gonna be what saves us on this. So here goes, ready? So we're gonna do our ground. There we go. Let me get that in there better. Get our ground. Green is gonna be our 12 volt or V back. I don't know who that, I don't know who that is, but and then this is going to be our current right here. And this is a little long. I need to snip this just a little bit. I guess somebody's here. I don't know who's here. No. go all right hopefully this is going to make the change that we needed so let's see uh, checking everything out we've got our connection here so that looks good uh, we'll do a continuity test here just to make sure I didn't short anything or I'm not going to short anything so let me do that okay let's see what we get okay so first we're going to do a continuity from the IPO from the XT60 I mean all right so here's our ground, remember, our yellow is our ground. So I should be able to touch any ground and get it. So there's one ground, there's two, 
and there's three. All right, now if I touch the positive, I should get nothing. And there's our VBAT, so we know that that's good. All right, so let's see if we have now solved the current issue. Okay, so let's get these wires put away. So I always say, guys, save your wires. You never know when you might need them. I got, a, I got about 10,000 of them probably. Sorry about the beeping. Somebody's on the property. I'll deal with it later. Um, let's go ahead and fasten this back down. I don't think we're taking it off again, but who knows. All right. Okay. So there's that, that. I'll put the other two in a second. Let's just see if this works. So let's plug it in. Turn it on. Okay. And let's get into our big flight. What is going on, guys? Oh, it's the mail. Oh, that's right. Awesome. Package pickups today. All right, so we are running 11.49 amps, sorry, volts, and we are running about 0.39 amps. Now, let's see if we can go back to our power and set this for onboard and click save. All right, and then mm, let me do a scale here of, I don't know, save, and then let's disconnect. Turn the power off. Unplug, go back in, turn it on, connect, power and battery, and there you go. Look at that. Awesome. I mean, this is great. I'm so excited about this because I'm going to uh, upgrade the multiplier though just a little bit. I need it to sit at three. Uh, you know what? Let me do it. Okay, so it says 0.3. Let me see if I offset this where I'm going with this. Is it taking it down? Yeah, it is. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I do two, what happens? Yeah, it's not helping me either way. All right, so I'm gonna calibrate one more time now, okay? So I know that we're doing a measured voltage of 11.49. So it says 11.49, and I know that our measured amp is 0.39. So let's click calibrate, apply calibration, and there you go. I think that we're gonna be actually pretty good. I don't know about this part. Um, I'd like to see it a little bit more, but Overall, this is great, and we did all that by doing that one wire. So there you go, Liam. At least now you've got another function out of this, okay? So we've got that, we've got that. Now we're on to the VTX, and this is not gonna be any fun, okay? Because this VTX is stuck under here. First thing I guess we need to do is just see if we even have VTX. I can't even tell if we have any power at all. Uh, and unfortunately, it looks like my TV is dead. Wonderful, okay. Well, let's see what we got real quick. I got to see if we're even getting any power on this VTX. Um, yeah, it says we're on, it says we're getting it. So let me see. <laughs> this is nice and tricky. All right, maybe I won't screw with it just yet. Um, what I want to do is I want to see what they've done with this VTX. Damn it, I guess I'm gonna have to take it apart. Ugh. Okay. I'm not comfortable with doing this right now because I have no idea where these wires are going. I can tell you what, what bothers me right now is, oh, you guys couldn't see that by the way, I'm sorry. So there's our, um, there's our uh, readings, okay? So this is great. Uh, he's got accuracy now on this. I do not like what they've done here. They have literally just left the wires, they've cut them. Guys, I will tell you flat out, it's, it's not cool when you do that, all right? I mean, you cannot just cut these wires like, what is this? I mean, what? I'm afraid here. There's two wires. Okay, yeah. Can't do that. All right, guys? So whoever did this, um, you know, just, just, I don't know, just be careful because what you're going to do is you're going to end up um, causing a huge problem when these wires ground out or touch or do whatever. I mean, look, if you why cut them, right? Why cut them? If you don't want them, don't cut them so short that they could just touch something and screw this up. Uh, you know, remove them entirely, right? But don't cut them. So now we're going to remove them because I'm worried that these outputs are going to be, uh, they're live. And if they're live, then, and, and the other thing is they cut your, they cut your smart audio out. I mean, like, I'm not really sure where the logic was in that, but now you, now you, first of all, you can't even reach the thing underneath here. So you're stuck on whatever. Okay. You know what? I'm not going to gripe. I'm going to fix it because I cannot, I can't do this. So, uh, and let me guess this, I don't, I don't even know what receiver this or what VTX this is uh, because it's glued on to the, 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 the uh, receiver is glued onto the VTX. What I want to do now is I just want to get this 
ground and power out of here. So there's the ground. I mean, there's no point in just cutting these. That's just not. I feel like somebody does this and then they sell it to someone and that someone's like, oh yeah, it's great. Well, yeah, but you don't know that you got live voltage sitting here that's barely hanging on. Okay, I do need to take this one out because this looks like it's gonna be the smart audio if it is. And if it is, you have a problem because um, you, you can't connect it. Now, the only problem with this board is I don't know if any of these are working. So when I touch the, um, the four, the UART four, with the receiver, it shut the whole board down. So I'm not really sure what's gonna happen here, but we'll give it a shot. All right, um, as for the receiver itself, I'm just gonna rip, god darn it. Uh, well, don't know. Cannot tell you what this is right now. And it's so glued down with stuff that I don't, I don't, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So let's go for a guess here and hope that this is a uh, uh, smart audio no. option to go to the TX. So let's, let's, now I've got to find a cable that fits that. And I'm hoping that these are going to work. Let me see the, yeah, that's going to be kind of interesting to see if I can find that. Let me see. Hmm. All right, so we're back to our wire. Oh, look, hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe, maybe, there you go. That looks like a TBS. Good. That's a cable that we use like on a TBS. So let me just see if this wire somehow. Let's see. So let's look at our two plugs here and see how much in common we have. So we've got. Well, let's go this route. So the wire combination is is the same actually. I think. Let's look. Red is on the outside. Red is on the outside. Then black. Then yellow. Then black. This is it. So this is. <laughs> believe it or not, this is the wire harness. Um, the downside is. Uh, I don't want to replace the whole harness because it's already wired. I just want to use the cable here, this green one. So I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll take this out of here and give it to this customer because I feel like he will benefit from it. And if it doesn't work smart audio, then I'll just take it back. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's going to. All right. So let's lift up where we're at here. Let's take that out. There we go. No, now I'm gonna to have to take that stupid flight control off again. Every time I fasten that thing down. All right, it's a lot of work, guys. This is, I'm not planning on doing all of this, um, but you know what? It's so much fun sometimes. Hold on. Now, how is this gonna go in? I didn't bother seeing how I took it out, so this could be upside down. We'll find out in just a second. Yeah, I think that is. Let's turn it the other way. There we go. Green wire's in. All right, so hopefully there's a chance for smart audio. I'm gonna find out in just a minute. All right, all right, green wire's in and that's good. Let me plug this back in. And now because I'm, because it's my luck since I already fastened the board down for the third time, I need to find out where the TX, where the TX is. So let's see, and this dumb thing is probably not gonna tell me, but let me check anyway, hold on. So I have, oh yeah, it does. So let's just do, we have TX4. So here's TX4 right here. So let's give that a shot, all right? Let's see if we can make this work. This would be really awesome for this customer, I think. And, um, I'm sure that, you know, if, if he, I'm sure if he could, he would want to have some more audio. So here we go. Let's go ahead and put some flux, use the flux pen right here. Let's go ahead and get our solder iron. All right. And we're going to use the TX right here. And God willing, this TX does what it's supposed to, okay? Here we go. I'm just gonna peel this off, wind it, put in some flux paste here. There we go, get ready to tin it. And I'm gonna leave it long for right now because I don't know if this is gonna be the final uh, TX that we're gonna use. And I don't know if I have to, somewhere on the board is a longer one or it's farther away, I mean. So I'm not gonna really worry about the length of this cable right now. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna cut this wire down we're gonna give it a shot. And if it blows the flight controller up, well then that's what happens. Suck it up and find a new one. Here we go. Let me disconnect this so I can turn this around. Okay. Let me my old man hat here, hold on. There we go. Put this onto the TX.
All right, there we go. Now, take all our wires away. We don't need any of those. Just gonna go back through here. Okay. And now, let's see what we got. Okay. So we're gonna go to beta flight now, right? And we're gonna say that our smart audio should be on, let's go to ports. And we're gonna say UART for smart audio and we're gonna go TBS. Something tells me it's gonna be TBS, okay? Come on. Okay, so here's the problem. This is exactly what happened. See how the power went out? Like I can't get the I won't get the board to turn back. Well, maybe I will. Okay, and it's gone. You see how that's happening right there? Like this is what happened on uh, TX. Yeah, there's a problem here. Damn it. All right, so I don't know now. I've got to see here what the heck's going on. So this is the exact same thing that happened when I plugged this in uh, when I tried to get the receiver onto the RX. So it's something on this rail entirely. Uh, I can try. I don't know how well this is going to succeed, but here's what they called the receiver UART. Uh, but that's an RX, so that's kind of darn it. Where's the TX? Why do these companies got to make this crap so difficult? Um, I don't even see a TX5 on this darn diagram. So, and we know you can't run that on the same, right? So, like, like what I'm explaining to some of you that are watching here. Okay, so. Oh, now what's going on? Now nothing's working. <sighs> Great. All right. Well, now we've got a serious problem. This is going to make me mad. Try this way. This is ridiculous. See how the board goes off? You get nothing. This is starting to piss me off. Now this is what was happening, like I said, when I tried to use the RX4. And there really is no logical explanation for this at this point, but except the fact that it's like just not my day today. So let me get this stupid receiver back in here. And I don't mean stupid as in it sucks. It's a good receiver. I just irritated right now. So we're getting our power from the board. We're just not getting the board to light up anymore. Damn it. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Turn off the... Or now our amp pull didn't go up any, so I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to lift this up. All right. All right, so it's not a wire, okay? Um, I don't think it's a wire at all. I think what it is is when you activate that port, it screws up the rest of the board. So now I've got to figure out how we're going to fix this. So here it goes. Hey, it's going to make me so mad. I'm back in BFU mode. Now I'm going to disconnect. Let me see if I can get back in. This is such an unbelievable thing. Okay. So we're going to start all over. Pissed off as I am at this point. Let's go back. I darn it. Here we go. We're going to go to firmware flasher. <sighs> Load firmware. Flash firmware. Erase everything I just did because it doesn't matter worth the crap. Damn it. Well, at least I've got coffee. God, that sucks. Oh, shut up. So there's something, there, there does seem to be something about activating UART 4. And I'm not really sure what the issue is with it, 
but what I will do is I'm going to put, okay, get off of there. Let's unplug this. Let's plug it back in. See? Everything's back to normal. God darn it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to just reassign the, um, I'm going to try this. I mean, this is just, this is like really, really, really not what I was expecting today. It's supposed to be a simple act of it, but you know what? I love learning. I love experiencing this. I just don't love it when it's lunchtime. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and put our UART2 back on for our receiver because that's not the issue. And I'm going to put the smart audio on UART4, TX4. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right here, right there. Sit still already for just one second. Just sit, cut, darn it, sit still. There you go. I don't know if that's going to hold. Yeah, it'll hold for now. Okay, here's the difference, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually take the resources. Uh, so I'm going to go to port. Now, if I activate UART 5 for TBS Smart Audio, activate UART 2, we're going to see if the board shuts off again. Mother of God, why? Why? Well, here we go again. <coughs> this is the kind of crap that you guys don't ever see when somebody's doing an online video and it just keeps screwing up. Me? Oh, hell no. If I'm going through it, you're going through it too. So, uh, we got nothing. The board shut off again. So, what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to just... I'm going to see if I drop this firmware down. I'm going to take this down to like... How low can I go on this? Um, I'll take it to 4.0. 4.1. Oh, 4 uh, nope. Take that out. Nope. <laughs> That's my wife. One second. Okay, that's my wife again. She's she's picking me up some stuff. Got to take the call. Okay, so we're going to take this down to, let's say, four point. Uh, you know what? No, I want to do something different. Forget this. This is irritating the crap out of me. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to actually go to beta flights. We're going to go get the releases. I can't, can't deal with this crap anymore. I'm going to go to 3.5.7, all right, because that was always my favorite. So let's just do that. So let me just type beta flight. Uh, hex files. Let's just do that. I should get a GitHub link. Here we go. And so we're going to look for the spectrum. Uh, okay, let's see. You got to just go. I think it's all the way to the bottom here, but let me see. Where the heck is this thing? And I'm telling you guys, I'm going to make you watch because I have to do it too. Uh, where the hell is it? No. find where it was God darn it. I'm sure it's right in front of me and I'm just missing it uh, let's see 4.1.5 let me do this sorry because I know it's right in front of me but I'm tired of looking um, beta flight firmware targets let's see if we can do that no no I don't need that uh, this is just where I was just now wonderful Is it? I know you guys are like, dude, it's right there. What's your problem? I'm getting it. Trust me. See, so I want to go to, okay, 4.2. times to click it immediately but uh, tell you what I'm gonna try something different because I'm just not finding it the way I want so let me go over here and I'm gonna go to my uh, tutorials, tutorials and then let me see let me set up beta flight here Beta flight download. Let's see if we can find this here. I want to say that there was a hex file. There was a, uh, that was an update. Oh, here it is. I think it's here. Oh my God, I'm right where I was. No. Why am I missing this, guys? I mean, like, I know it's, where is it? Oh, crap. Never mind. That's stupid. 
Next. Sorry. I didn't see the next at the bottom. Damn it. Oh, this sucks. So I got to do this all the way to... Where are we at? 3 point... Oh. All right, we're getting there. 3.5.5, 3.5.6. No, no, 3.5.6. Uh, I'll just click this and see what it has. I'm gonna find it. I think I just should just throw in the towel at this point because I don't know where the heck it went. I don't know what I've done. So I'm gonna go back because I'm getting irritated. You can fast forward through all this, just figure out where why I'm so lost in this right now. Here's the targets. God darn it. Okay, finally. All right, so that's my fault. I uh, I need to be I need to be more on the ball with this. I'm just gonna actually save this uh, page 3.5 point wherever the hell it is. Uh, I don't want this one. I want there it is. Okay, so I'm sorry. Apologize because I'm just lost in space right now. And, I, and look, I have it saved. It's how stupid it is. I even have it saved, and I didn't know that. All right, so I'm gonna find this god darn thing. Uh, <laughs> it better have the board. Here's a Spectrum 3.5.7. So I'm just going to click that. Oh, I think I have to right click on it. No, I guess not. Okay, so that was fun. A real big waste of time because it was right here the whole time. My apologies. I'll put that link on our website or something so that you don't have to look as stupid as I did. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Betaflight and I'm going to tell it that I want to load from a local. Hey, load from a local. And I want to go to my downloads folder because that's where I put it. And I want to load this one. Come on. Talk to me, Goose. Flash rumor. Swear to God, this has to work. I mean, it has to because I'm running out of options. Besides, I like 3.5.7. It's a good setup. And I want to know, under that setup, do I, does the board shut off if you activate Duart 4 or 5, apparently? Five didn't shut off usually. Uh, five did not cause a, the, the board to stop before. All right, let's connect. Let's see what ports we have now. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna tell it I want TBS on. Oh, no, you know what? I'm gonna do UART for TBS. Shut up, dog's going crazy. Save and reboot. Okay, the lights are still on on the board. Okay, um, but nothing else. Great, so you can't do that. Okay, that worked out real well. just can't hate this as much as I do, I promise you. Maybe it doesn't support smart audio. I have no idea. I'll have to go see if there's a release note on that from Betaflight. But we'll just keep doing this all day long. Till this stupid thing, till we find the solution. The 3.5.7 should be solid. Now, if the RX and TX won't work... Connect. 
Let's go to ports. All right, so we do know that if we turn this one on, we're good, right? So we know that we can save that. The board will reinitialize. Great, so, so far so good. Okay, well, this has been really fun. Now I really don't want to mess with it anymore. Damn it. And we also know that if we put this into TBS, save and reboot, it's gonna disable the other. Okay, so you are too, still okay. But we're gonna disable all of it now, you see? So you are, who the hell is this? Why is there a guy at my house? I'm gonna leave this running live. There's a bunch of crazy people out here. Alright, coming back. Sorry guys, these videos, this is the way they are. I can't help it. Somebody comes on the property and we deal with it. Okay, so where was I? So we're gonna do, let's try UART 3. I don't even know where UART 3 is on this board. We're gonna save it. And we've lost it. Okay, so we have no option. This sucks. So let me just disconnect. We will not initialize this at all. I'm not sure why. I'll have to reach out and ask somebody why, but that's fine. Maybe that's why they didn't use smart audio on this board. That sucks. And you know what's funny is none of the other UARTs worked. I wonder if I can, I don't know, we'll try something. All right, so let's go ahead for the 50th time, let's flash this again. This just sucks. Okay. And let's do a, hurry up. We know the routine by now, by heart. So I guess that's why the smart audio wasn't connected. I don't know, although the wire shouldn't still have been cut like, cut like it was, but we're gonna see, all right? So I've got a couple other ideas and one of them might be to see if we can, we know that we can put, I think the TBS smart audio on UART 2, right? But I'm not sure that's gonna work. And if we did that, we need to find a way to put the iBus on another UART, and that's going to probably lock it up. I mean, it sucks. This sucks. So there's definitely some screwed up stuff here. So let's connect. Now, hold on a second. Let me see. Can I... Can I use a pad if I change the resource? Look at me. I'm trying to figure this out now. Okay, let's go to ports again. Okay, so... Here's what we do know. We know that if we put TBS on here and click Save and Reboot, system should start back up, right? Yeah, and it does. So let's connect, go to ports, and there's the TBS, right? Uh, have no clue uh, where UART 1 is, and I do know that if I try to activate UART 5 for serial, it doesn't work for RX. And if I do this, I believe this freezes the board as well. No, it didn't. Okay, so let's see. Hold on now, maybe we have some luck. Maybe we just swap these around a little bit. Okay, so let's see if this is gonna work. Hey, what if I see one more person walk on this property? There's gonna be a little Beirut going on around here. All these crazies walking around. I don't need any of this crap here. All right, here we go. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna operate. All right, we're gonna take, we're gonna take our UART2 iBus and we're gonna move it to UART4. And we're gonna take our UART4 and move it to UART2. And we're going to see if we can make some magic happen. This backwards ass way of doing things. But if we can do it for the customer, it's worth it. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and put that there. Let's go ahead and put this here. And let's get to operating. Ah, okay. So here's our S bus or our I bus. This is going to go on uh, UART4RX. There it is. And this is our 
TBS Smart Audio. This is going to go on your two TX, and there it is. Now, will this work? Well, let's first turn on our transmitter. Okay, let's go to our receiver. And my mouse is dead. No, it's working. Oh. Okay, so let's go to configuration. We gotta switch this back to S bus, I bus. I mean, I bus, I bus right there. Save and reboot. And what looked good has now gone to crap. Why won't it initialize, I wonder. I don't understand this at all. At this point, it's just aggravating. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to put it in DFU again, and then I'm just going to unplug it and plug it back in. Damn it. All right, well, that's going to be out. I'm going to take that out for the time being because I do not understand the reason that it's doing that. It is disappointing that this damn thing will not do what it's supposed to, but that is what it is. So we're just going to go flash this one more time. As aggravating as this is. And look, guys, I would edit this video. Now, look, let me explain something to you. I would edit this, okay? I get it. That's something else. Man, your video's so long. You know, I don't care. Fast forward it if you want, okay? But when I go through crap like this, somebody else is going to end up going through it. So if you watch this video and you can learn something from the, the crappy end too, good, okay? That's what it's all about. So don't give me a hard time about the fact that we're sitting here for an hour looking at some video. It's just what we do, all right? So we're going to load the firmware local again. Okay, and um, I am going to leave the wire soldered to, uh, I'm going to redo the soldering while this is doing that. I might as well go ahead and redo this. So I'm going to go ahead and re, uh, leave the wire soldered to TX4 for smart audio so that if and when I find out why it's doing this, I can just tell the customer, all right, guy, go ahead now and activate your port and you're good to go. All right. Are we good? No, nope, not yet. Okay, I think I interrupted it halfway through. Okay, the radio is going bonkers. Let's do this. Let's do it again. I think I just bumped it as I was finishing that solder. Now I'm going to regret it. So let's do it one more time. Load it local. Flash it, call it a day. I guess at this point, wait, 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 I guess at this point I can go back to the newest firmware now. Doesn't even matter anymore. Here I was trying the older firmware, hoping that it would do something, and it didn't. So, uh, we'll deal with it later. Just very disappointing. But, might as well see if we have uh, VTX. I still don't even know if we have VTX. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and load the firmware online now. We're going to take it to the newest firmware. I didn't even think about this. The fact that we're flashing it already, I mean, it didn't work. So uh, let's just go ahead and oh, that's right. It won't do it. Sorry, my bad. <sighs> of course not. If any of you guys are watching this and you want to tell me what you did to make this work, by all means, please tell me. I'm always, always interested in seeing. There we go. All right, so we're gonna let that go. This is not a, this is one of those where we share knowledge and God darn it if I don't need it right now for sure. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back on. I just don't understand the UART issue. I'm trying to think because UART four and five will do it. UART three, don't even, don't even know what UART they, I, I assume they reserved I think of what you are they reserve for the spectrum uh, configuration but that's just disappointing okay 
So we're back. For the last time, here we go, guys. So we're just going to go ahead and set it up the way I know. So we're going to put that for your S-Bus. Or I-Bus, I mean. Save that. Connect. Configuration. We've already done this, so we can go ahead now. A little thing there. Now that we've done our one shot and our motor configuration, I'm going to go ahead and set this for, I guess I'll do for 300 for right now. Connect. Uh, ports, okay, those are fine. Power, uh, no, here. Configuration here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do, there we go. I, I bus, save and reboot. Darn it, come here. Me and this last piece here don't get along. Let me screw this in real quick. Ah. As frustrating as this quad has been. I enjoy the challenge on it. I just wish that there was more, something to make more sense out of this. Okay, uh, so that's all done. We're gonna leave that like it is. Uh, we do need to now go ahead and reconfigure the transmitter again. So let's calibrate, go to ports, configuration. I think that's good. I was gonna turn off uh, air mode, I turn off. Let's save that. Connect, and then we'll go to configuration again. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. We need to do the battery. We'll do that in a second. Our battery, we're gonna do on board and on board. Save, give it some power. And I believe that we have to actually disconnect and then reconnect. I don't know if we have to turn the power off or not yet. We'll find out real quick. Today. Okay. Turn it off. Turn it off. Plug it in. Turn it on. So much goofy crap. There we go. Now we know that we have to go to our power battery and we need to change our. Uh, we need to do a calibration, but as you remember, if you have it at zero, it won't work. So we're just going to go ahead and crank this up. Whoops, not that. I'm going to crank this one up. Save. And then what we will do is turn off the power. Disconnect, reconnect, turn on the power. Okay, go to power battery. And yeah, I saved that. So let me just go here, go here, save. I should, there's my amp draw. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and calibrate this. Uh, I think I clicked it. Calibrate. Yeah, there we go. So our measured voltage again is 11.48, for the 50th time. And then our amp is 0.39, for the 50th time. Calibrate, apply calibration. And we should start seeing this take over here in just a second. Give it one minute to catch up. There we go, 11 point, that's fine. And that's perfect. Perfect. Cannot actually this came out better than last time. Okay, let's go to the receiver now. Uh, configuration. Uh, I bus ports to. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's go to receiver. Okay, everything looks good. So we're just going to set our modes back up. So let's go to modes. Do our arm. There we go. Move that there. Uh, horizon. There we go. Sorry, it's a three-way switch. There, angle, put in the same thing. There we go. And then we'll do, uh, where am I at here? Air mode, at range. That'll be the middle. Okay. And so acro with air in the middle, and we'll save. And we'll go to motors, and we'll turn this on, and we will arm them. Perfect. Run great. Okay, and I believe they still spin the right direction. Excellent. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good though. Okay. I've got to figure out what he did here. Okay, we have a new problem. Oh, let's see if our VTX is working. It's one thing that we want to check, right? Uh, come on. God darn it, come on. How's the problem here?
All right, there we go. VTX is on. I mean, can't change the channel right now. Darn it, because nothing changes. Find the button to push, I guess. It's somewhere in there. If you want to try. It's ridiculous. Um, we're just going to basically try our best to figure out why the smart audio won't work. That's going to be the ne next thing that we're going to have to do. Now, we do have a problem here. So, this motor, all these... Okay, so he's fine. Let's just put this one on. There we go. Okay, so that's all good. VTX is working. We can see it on the screen here. So that's all good and well. Uh, what else we got? Modes, oh, receiver, <coughs> PID tuning, <coughs> power and battery is good. Guys, I think that's it. I don't see anything else that's wrong except the obvious. Can't get my smart audio to work. Uh, I am going to, um, <laughs> at this point, I am going to do a dump file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case I have to do this again, I am not going to reset all these damn things again. So let's just type dump. Whoops, not drum, but dump. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go up here and do this. There we go. Copy. Open our file up so we can save it. File. New. Here. Paste. File. Save as, and we'll just under customer. Uh, let's do here, new folder, and we'll call this Liam. Uh, put this under Liam's name, and we're gonna call this uh, updated firmware uh, dump file. Oh my God, I can't spell today. Can't type, dump file data flight. Hi, just leave that, dot txt. Save. Okay, and then on top of that, we'll go do a setup here real quick. Let's connect. Go to config. Oops. Go to setup. Go to backup. And we should be in the same folder now, hopefully. Nope, we're not. Obviously. Awesome. So we'll go Rayborn here, and then we'll go Apple one, and then we'll go to Liam. There's Liam. And then we're going to do a. Um, Spectrum F400. Um, uh, I don't know, default setup config. Okay, save. All right, fine, whatever. So this looks good. Uh, I really wish we could have gotten that to work with it. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can figure it out. But like I said, it's already soldered, so it shouldn't be too difficult to do. So now we're just going to go through a test flight. Okay, so I will uh, test fly this and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, this has been a very daunting, daunting, daunting task. <laughs> and I'm very sorry that it took so long, but sometimes we run into things and there's, there's, there's an issue somewhere here and I'm gonna try to find out where it is. Um, but as it stands right now, everything looks good. Uh, I will ask if you have any questions about this or anything else that we do, please go to our Facebook group, uh, Cyclone F uh, sorry, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Cyclone FPV. It's got a lot of people on there that are willing to help you. Um, and, uh, and as always, please follow us on Facebook and then also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. All right. Other than that, guys, God bless. Have fun. Be safe. Spend time with your family this weekend, guys. You've always got uh, plenty of time to fly. You never know how much time you have left with your family, though, and your loved ones. So please make the most of it. I wish my kids were here today. I would be spending time with them one day, right? Okay. Uh, other than that, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Peace.